Okay, so the short version of this video is that the 15 inch M2 MacBook Air is probably the best 15 inch laptop in the world for most users, but not for every user. So let's talk about it. You see the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air is the best selling laptop right now. It's the MacBook that got the most upgrades this year with a new design, larger display, MagSafe, and everything else that I mentioned in my two month review. But the one comment that I kept seeing is that a lot of users wish they could get one with a bigger display and they didn't want to spend the $2,500 on the 16 inch MacBook Pro because they didn't need a Pro device. And that's why I really like this laptop. In terms of form factor, it looks like you took the 13 inch model and just stretched it out. And while it is noticeably bigger, it's only 0.01 inches or 0.02 centimeters thicker. And if you haven't seen it in real life, it's kind of crazy when you fold it up because it just looks and feels so slim. You'd expect it to be heavier, and it is. It's about 3.3 pounds, but that's still less than the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And as long as it actually fits in your bag, I don't really see much of a downside to the 15 inch MacBook Air in terms of portability. Once you open it up, you're getting the same same keyboard as the smaller version. It's one of my favorite laptop keyboards, it has a full height row of function keys, and I like the larger palm rest assembly on the 15 inch because it makes the typing experience more comfortable. We're also getting a larger trackpad. It's responsive, it's accurate, and you can click anywhere. It has pressure sensing capabilities, and in general, MacBooks have my favorite trackpads on any laptop. I've got two of the colors here, Midnight and Starlight. It also comes in silver and space gray. Now, I love Midnight, I think it looks so cool but it will show fingerprints if that's something that bothers you get a different color the starlight is also fire and then the space gray and silver are timeless now personally i'm not bothered by fingerprints so i would go with midnight in terms of ports we're getting two thunderbolt slash usb4 ports for accessories a magsafe 3 port for fast charging and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack if you want to use wired headphones i love magsafe because i can safely charge my macbook air and i don't need to worry about one of the dogs yeah i'm talking to you mac inadvertently ripping the cord out and sending this macbook flying across room and by the way yes one of our dogs is named mac it's not because of apple macs or macbooks but that's just her name having magsafe also means that i don't need to use one of the USB-C ports to charge and i always have the two ports available for accessories at the same time just like with the 13 inch model all three ports are on the left side, so it means that you can only charge and connect accessories from one side. And this is one of the advantages of going with a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now looking at the display, it's the same type of display as we have on the 13 inch model. It has the same support for 1 billion colors, the same 500 nits max brightness. It's a P3 display, and the only difference is that it's larger and has a higher resolution. This has different benefits to different users. For some users, it means that they can see more of a website, a document, or a spreadsheet without scrolling. And for other users who may have trouble with their vision, it means that they can just take the same amount of content and just make it look bigger so it's easier to see. In terms of image quality, I'm very happy with this display. Content looks great. I've edited photos and video on it without any issues. And overall, I think it's a solid display. I still prefer the display on the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro because it's mini LED, it's a little brighter for SDR and definitely brighter for HDR content and it's 120 hertz versus this one being 60 hertz, but that of course comes at a cost and I'll leave that to the detailed review. We're still getting a notch and like I said before, yes, I wish it wasn't there if it means that I didn't have to give up on the thin bezels, which can't be done right now with the current camera module. No, it doesn't bother me and no, it doesn't interfere with how I actually use this MacBook or any other MacBook that has a notch. And the one feature that I wish we did get with it is Face ID. Now instead, biometric authentication is done through Touch ID, which you can use for things like logging in and making purchases. Now in terms of external display support, we're looking at one 6K 60 Hertz display. So you can use the Apple Studio display, which I have, and works great or if you're looking for a very high quality display which is specifically designed to work with Macs and is about half the price check out the BenQ PD2725U. The speakers were also upgraded from the 13 inch model so while they're still located in the hinge we're getting a six speaker sound system instead of four and it now includes force canceling woofers. So you might be asking is it louder than the 13 inch? Yes but can you hear a noticeable difference in terms of quality? 
maybe for some things, but it's not a noticeable difference like going to the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which is really good, or the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which definitely has my favorite speakers. Ultimately, yes, you could hear some difference between the 13 and 15 inch models, but no, that wouldn't be a reason for me to get the 15 over the 13. The camera is the same 1080p camera as the 13 inch. And here's a quick sample. This is a camera and microphone test of the 15 inch M2 MacBook Air. This will give you a pretty good idea of the type of image quality that you should expect and the type of audio quality that you're going to get. But what about processing power? Since both MacBooks are fanless and completely silent, but we have the same chip and a larger thermal envelope, the question might be, does the 15 inch MacBook Air give us better performance? Single and multi-core performance benchmarks were very similar, as was GPU performance, as long as we're comparing it with the 10 core GPU 13 inch and not the eight core. When I tested sustained performance, the 15 inch was marginally better, less than a 2% difference, and even that could have been due to just random variance in the test. Ultimately, the day-to-day -day user experience feels the same to me, and even if there was a slight advantage in sustained performance, we're really talking about a few seconds when it comes to rendering video or batching photo. To me, that's not a meaningful difference because whether a video renders in five minutes or five minutes and 10 seconds doesn't really make a practical difference. The more important difference would be when I'm doing something like editing a video and I'm scrubbing through the timeline or working with visual graphics. And in that case, I didn't notice a difference between the two and the more important factor was upgrading the unified memory, which I'll get to later on. In terms of SSD speeds, we're seeing the same disparity that we saw with the 13 inch model, where the 256 gigabyte version is slower than the 512 gig and up models. I've said this before, but this isn't likely to make a difference to the overwhelming majority of users, certainly not ones that only need 256 gigabytes. And I still think that it would be nice for Apple to acknowledge this during the checkout process, just for full transparency. Now, all this talk about performance performance brings me to battery life. Now, if you've seen any of my 13 inch M2 MacBook Air videos, you know that the battery life has been excellent. So I was curious to see how the 15 inch model would perform considering that it has a larger battery, but also has to power a larger display. Both laptops are rated for 18 hours, and so far I'm getting very similar battery life. I easily finish a day without needing a charge, unless I'm working on a big video project, at which point I'm always plugged in. And speaking of charging, you can choose between a 35 watt dual USB-C port power adapter and a 70 watt single USB power adapter at checkout. And there's no upcharge there, no pun intended. So it comes down to whether you want faster charging or the versatility of charging two devices at once. As far as configuration and pricing, the 15 inch starts out at $1299, which is now $200 more than the 13 inch. And of course, it still comes with eight gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigabytes of storage. And remember that you cannot upgrade this MacBook after you buy it. Let's start with unified memory. If you're a very basic user, and if you plan on only keeping this MacBook for a few years, you could definitely get by with eight gigabytes. If on the other hand, you keep your devices for as long as possible, consider getting 16 gigabytes of unified memory. You'll never regret having more than you need. And of course, if you want the most capable MacBook Air, you can upgrade all the way up to 24 gigabytes. And then we're really getting into a conversation of whether the 14 inch MacBook Pro might be a good fit. Now looking at storage, if you're just surfing the web and working with web-based applications or basic documents, 256 gigabytes of storage will work. When you get your MacBook Air, everything that's on it uses less than 35 gigabytes of storage, and that leaves you with more than 200 gigs of free space. Having said that, you do not want to run out of space. So if you keep photos, videos, or backups on your MacBook, or if you use large applications that take up a lot of space, absolutely consider upgrading the storage so that you have as much space as you need. And remember that unlike the unified memory, you can supplement the internal storage with less expensive external SSDs, which you can share with other devices. So while there are 15 inch laptops up there that offer cheaper RAM and internal storage upgrades, there are ones that offer a better display, others that are a better choice for gamers, and of course, less expensive options. When you consider that this is the thinnest 15 inch laptop in the 
world. It's super light and portable. It has a powerful M2 chip, a nice display, excellent battery life, and an outstanding keyboard and trackpad combo. I think the 15 inch M2 MacBook Air could become one of the most popular MacBooks ever. Now you should check out this comparison. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.